Gamecock fans, I went back and watched the film on what Mississippi State's offense has done so far this season, and I had one main takeaway. South Carolina's defense has got a great opportunity this weekend. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks Podcast. I am Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast, and also a staff writer for Gamecocks Digest over on SI.com. As always, thank y'all so much for tuning into the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast, whether you're watching us on YouTube or you're listening to us wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We are already in week four of the 2023 college football season here for the South Carolina Gamecocks and the Gamecocks are getting ready to play their first conference home game of the season as they'll be taking on the Mississippi State Bulldogs later this week. But of course, there's still a lot of time that has to pass before we get to game day and so We got a lot that we got to dive into regarding this football team, a football team that has got a lot of newness in their football program. Obviously, the Bulldogs are led by first-year head coach Zach Arnett, and one of the first things that Zach Arnett said that he wanted to do was he wanted to change the identity of this offense. And the thing is, Mississippi State right now, they are struggling to establish their identity on that side of the ball which means that South Carolina's defense is going to have a golden opportunity this week to get better in certain areas. Now, regarding that identity that Zach Garnett wanted to establish, Zach Garnett wants this Bulldog offense to run the football. He wants the ground attack to be the backbone of this Mississippi State offense. And when the Bulldogs played the Arizona Wildcats in Week 2, That was the case. In that game, the Bulldogs ran the football 33 times compared to just 19 passes from Will Rogers. They used a lot of 11 personnel sets. 11 personnel meaning one tight end and one running back sort of in that box area where the offense is mainly set at. And they ran it early and often in this game. But the strange thing is... Everything that I just mentioned did not play out the same way in week three when the Bulldogs took on the LSU Tigers. In week three, the Bulldogs used a lot more shotgun trip sets at the beginning of the football game. They did not run as much 11 personnel. They had Will Rogers throwing the football a lot more. And there wasn't really a change towards what they had done in week two until the beginning of the second half. At which point, Mississippi State was down at least three scores against the LSU Tigers. So what led to this change in Week 3 in terms of how the Bulldogs start off the football game offensively? Well, when watching their Week 2 game against Arizona, it did not seem like, at least from my vantage point, that Will Rogers was very involved in their offensive game plan. And It seems like going into week three, there was a bigger emphasis from this Mississippi State staff on trying to get Will Rogers into more of a rhythm against that Tiger defense. And this leads into why I think this game is a golden opportunity for South Carolina's defense. Because right now, Mississippi State is struggling to establish a consistently successful offensive identity. You have a new head coach that wants a run game emphasis established on the offensive side of the football. The best player on that side of the ball, however, is their quarterback and Will Rogers, or at least he is their most productive and successful offensive player that they've got on that side of the ball. The other thing is, Mississippi State is trying to incorporate more of a pro-style approach to that side of the ball. Going away from the air raid offense that the late, great 
Mike Leach ran in Starkville over the past few years. And what has happened is, this has complicated the verbiage in this offense. This has led to a lot more formations, a lot more sets, a lot more schematically that this offensive personnel is having to adjust to, in some cases, on the fly. And this is leading to multiple miscommunication issues between Will Rogers and some of his wide receivers, at times not being on the same page, leading to an incompletion, or leading to Will Rogers holding onto the football a little bit longer in the pocket. I even saw one play when watching back the Mississippi State and LSU game where there were linemen pulling from different directions during a run play. To put it bluntly, that is never supposed to happen when you've got pulling blockers going from one side of the offensive line to the other side. You're never supposed to have guys going in opposite directions. That says that these guys are doing a lot more thinking than they are playing freely when they're out there on the football field. And relating all this back to South Carolina's defense, the Gamecocks have had to worry about dual-threat quarterbacks the first three weeks. They've had to worry about receiving cores with multiple downfield threats. And at the very minimum, the Gamecocks have had to play a bunch of teams at the start of this season that have clear and mostly successful identities on the offensive side of the ball. Mississippi State doesn't possess any of those characteristics coming into this matchup. So in my opinion, this game against the Bulldogs, while I'm not trying to say that South Carolina has a chance to run away with this thing, I do think that they have a really good opportunity to shore up maybe some issues on that side of the football. I think that this defensive line is going to have a better chance to affect the quarterback this week because I think that, quite frankly, some of these Mississippi State offensive linemen, they're not exactly the greatest in terms of one-on-one -on -one pass protection, especially on the right side of the offensive line. They also, at times, are a bit slow at picking up stunts and twists. These defensive backs, especially some of these younger defensive backs that have had to play a lot to start this season, again, they're not going to have to worry about a real vertical threat from this Mississippi State receiving core. So Clay White can run a lot more man press coverage this week than maybe he did last week against Georgia for whatever reason. That will be vital experience for those guys. And for this linebacker core, they're going to get tested in their own way. As a matter of fact, they're going to be the most important position unit for this defense in this matchup against Mississippi State. And I'm going to explain why in just a couple moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now, if you join FanDuel, you can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Again, that is $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. The Carolina Panthers have started off 0-2, and, and they're going to be playing their Week 3 matchup in Seattle against the Seahawks on Sunday afternoon at 4.06 p.m. Eastern Time. The Panthers' spread for this game has been set at plus 5.5 points by the FanDuel odds makers, and the money line odds for the Panthers are currently set at plus 210. If you think that Bryce Young, Frank Reich, and this Panthers offense especially are going to get things back on track, then you can feel free to put money on them by joining FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season right here on FanDuel. FanDuel is the official betting partner of the NFL. Welcome back to this Tuesday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day. And as always, a big thank you to each and every one of you everydayers who make the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily watch on YouTube or your daily listen, wherever you get your audio podcast daily. I mentioned it just a couple of moments ago, but I think that South Carolina's linebacker core and one specific player from that group 
is going to play a key role for this Gamecock defense in this football game against Mississippi State this upcoming weekend. The main reason why I think this is because of what Mississippi State tries to accomplish with their running game. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, the Bulldogs try to prioritize that ground game to a significant degree. Now, they did not do so as much last week against LSU, but if I had to make an educated guess, I would have to assume that based on what South Carolina's rush defense has done so far this year, which has not been catastrophically bad by any means, but hasn't also been great. In essence, the rush defense has been hovering around average. South Carolina's rush defense has made stops at times when they've needed to, but they've also had a ton of drives where they have let the opponent just drive down the field on them. For example, what happened multiple times against the Georgia Bulldogs this past week. I think because of that, Mississippi State is going to try to establish that ground game early and often in this football game on Saturday night. So that's one reason why they are going to be important in this game. Secondly, Mississippi State runs a ton of both zone and power run plays. Talked about this multiple times on the show now. Zone blocking, the offensive linemen are moving more horizontally on the field. They essentially have a certain lane that they are responsible for, and they just try to make sure that you do not cut them off from getting to that lane. Power run plays, those are assignment blocking based plays for the offensive line. Offensive lineman A is assigned to defensive lineman A. They have one particular player that they are responsible for blocking. They're going to run both of those kind of plays on Saturday night, which means that these linebackers for South Carolina, they're going to be tested in terms of their ability to sift through all the visual traffic and their ability to not run themselves essentially out of the play or out of a gap per se. Mississippi State does have a running back in Woody Marks that does have great vision. He can make really good cuts moving back to the opposite side of a formation. So these linebackers, they're going to have to be on their toes, especially when number seven is out there for the Bulldogs on Saturday night. The other thing is, you know football really well. You know that the run game is typically used to set up the play-action passing game. And the main goal with the play-action passing game is to sucker in the opposing team's linebackers so that That team's quarterback has an opportunity to just pop a pass right over their heads and behind them for a pretty decent game. And because of the fact that Mississippi State, as I mentioned earlier, they do not have any real vertical threat in their passing game, they're going to do a lot of play-action plays in the short and intermediate range of the field. In essence, the areas that South Carolina's linebackers are patrolling. So... These linebackers, they're going to have to be on their A game in terms of diagnosing everything that's happening in front of them because Mississippi State's run game is going to test their eye discipline and also their mental discipline. And that leads me to the one guy that I think really needs to take a step forward in this game, a guy that I think needs to emerge for this team, and that is Stone Blanton. Stone Blanton is a guy that, discussing him before, I commend him greatly for his work ethic both on the football field and off the football field. This is a guy that's been lauded by Shane Beamer as someone that works really hard on the practice field, works really hard when it comes to film study, a guy that puts in the extra hours. So there's no question the kind of work ethic that Stone Blanton has. But we've also talked about how Stone Blanton continues, for one reason or another, to struggle, it seems, to not just put himself in the correct position, but also finish plays. I still think that part of that issue might be due to what Clayton White asked of his linebackers in his scheme, all of the quote-unquote keys that they are responsible for. But there's just something mentally that I feel like is still holding Stone Blanton back. And I can exactly pinpoint what the issue is. But what I will say is this, based on everything I just went over regarding this Mississippi State run game and what they're going to try to set up on Saturday night, this has to be a game where Stone Blanton takes a step forward in that aspect. 
Stone Bland has got to be there for Debo Williams. He's got to help him out a little bit more because right now, South Carolina, they've not gotten as much disruption up front on the defensive line as they've needed to. And again, running that 4-2-5 nickel defense, there's a lot of stress on these linebackers to make plays in the open field, to make things happen. And if they don't make things happen, then all of a sudden it falls on the Gamecock defensive backs to come up field and try to make a stop. Debo Williams, I think, has shown flashes of being a linebacker that can basically just wreck an entire play by himself because of that extra gear that he has, his ability to diagnose what's happening, and at times be able to telegraph what is coming. I've seen that now a couple of times from Debo Williams. Still waiting to see that from Stone Blanton, however. Bland is a guy that, again, he is now about to go into his fourth career start at that linebacker position. So we do have to imagine that he is getting at least a little bit more comfortable at the second level. And I did think that he had a good performance against the Georgia Bulldogs, at least in terms of being an extra pass rusher on certain blitz packages. But rush defense, we've got to see Stone Bland take that next step. And if that doesn't happen this weekend against Mississippi State, again, that's going to put a lot more burden on Debo Williams' shoulders, in my opinion, on the secondary shoulders. And it could open the door for Mississippi State's offense, as much as they've been sputtering recently, to possibly make this game pretty interesting on their side of things. If you're South Carolina's defense, you do not want to allow that to happen. So... For all those reasons that I just mentioned, I think that Stone Plan, he is probably the most important player on this Gamecock defense on Saturday night because he is a guy that they've got to see emerge in this contest. We need to be walking away from that game saying, number 52, that was the best game of his career by far on Saturday night. We need to walk away from this game saying that. Otherwise, this game could be a lot more intriguing than Gamecock fans might suspect heading into that contest. Now, we're going to switch things over to the offensive side of the ball in a moment because I want to talk about an intriguing development regarding the depth chart along the offensive line. And with that development, I have a pretty bold take about what the lineup is going to look like on Saturday night. And we're going to touch on that in just a couple of moments. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Now, this upcoming game against Mississippi State has been announced as a sellout by South Carolina's athletic department, so you Gamecock fans out there continue to do a great job of supporting this football team. And because of that, you might also be starting to stress about the next home game, which is against Florida three Saturdays from now. You might be somebody that's a bit worried about missing out on a potential revenge game opportunity that the Gamecocks are going to have. And if you are worried about possibly missing out on another sellout crowd here in Columbia, you're not going to have to worry because Game Time is going to have you covered. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. And they've also got the Game Time Guarantee, which means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same row and section for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snap the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day in just 30 minutes. The Gamecocks released their week four depth chart on Monday afternoon, and I'm not going to go over the entire depth chart because, quite frankly, there's no reason to, there's no real reason to overreact to a whole lot on this depth chart because, If you haven't noticed by now, Shane Beamer, he does not change a whole lot when it comes to this depth chart. For example, Juice Wells is still listed as a starting wide receiver on the depth chart currently, and he is not going to be playing at all this week. I can promise you all that. So that's just the one indicator that you need to know that the depth chart, it's not really all that serious. 
until you find a couple of specific positions that have some notable changes. And that leads me into my bold take. I think that this upcoming weekend against Mississippi State, you're going to see a change along the offensive line for South Carolina in regards to their starting lineup. At right guard, the dreaded or is back. And that or is listed between Ja'Kai Moore and Trevon Baugh at that right guard position. Now, Shane Beamer said after the Georgia game this past weekend that, admittedly, Trevon Baugh should have gotten more snaps against the Bulldogs. And he said that he told him that straight up in the locker room after the game was over. And it was interesting to see that despite the fact that his freshman counterpart, his freshman teammate, Tree Babalade, started left tackle and played pretty much the entire football game, I think, at that spot, that Trevon Baugh, he did only get a few snaps in that football game. But as I think y'all will recall, um, there were still certain things on that right side of the offensive line that were problematic. There were still certain issues in terms of pass protection. And I'm just going to simply leave it at that. So the fact that Trevon Baugh is now officially listed on the depth chart as basically a co-starter alongside Ja'Kai Moore at right guard, here's my theory. And it's not exactly complicated to figure out but I think that Trevon Baugh is going to start at right guard, and I think you're going to see Ja'Kai Moore get bumped out to right tackle and get a start there against Mississippi State on Saturday night. Ja'Kai Moore has played right tackle in the past. He has made starts at that spot. So it's not like that is going to be a novel position for Ja'Kai Moore. But I think that you're going to see that change made because, again, this coaching staff, they're seeing improvements from this offensive line. Now... They're going to try to find a way to unlock an even greater potential from this group. And at this point, I think that that means that it's time to just go to the other true freshman that can play and that has proven that he can play along that offensive line against high-level competition. So I think you'll see Baud right guard and Shakai Mort right tackle this week in the trenches. The other note that I had from this depth chart release Mario Anderson Jr. is now listed as a co-backup at the running back position alongside Juju McDowell behind still current starter to carry on Joyner. The intriguing part with that entire situation is that Juju McDowell did not get a single snap against Georgia this past Saturday. Don't know the reason for that. Don't know if Juju McDowell is hurt. I know that he was a bit banged up during preseason camp, so I don't know if maybe that injury got re-aggravated and somehow Shane Beamer's forgotten about it, or if there's something else going on there. I don't know the exact reasoning for why Juju McDowell did not play against Georgia. But, as we all saw this past Saturday, uh, Mario Anderson Jr. continues to run with the most power and with the most violence, quite frankly, out of any of the guys in that running back room. And I think that this change on the depth chart is essentially a way of recognizing that the staff is noticing what Mario Anderson Jr. is doing in these football games and that he's going to get more snaps in these football games. Now, that's not to say that I think he's going to supplant to carry on Joyner as the starting running back. I'm not going to go that far. But I do think that this is an admission by the staff that they see what is going on here, that they see what Martin Anderson Jr. is bringing to the football field, and that they think that he can help this offense moving forward. So I do think that it is fair to note that, and I do think the Gamecock fans are going to get their wish in the sense that Mario Anderson Jr. is going to continue to get some increased playing time in these football games, and definitely not just in garbage time if the game is potentially out of reach for one reason or another. But with that being said, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I hope y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show, as always. What are y'all's thoughts about what this South Carolina defense could accomplish against Mississippi State's offense on Saturday night? Do you think that the linebacker core is going to be the most important position group for this Gamecock defense? And lastly, what are your main takeaways from the two subtle changes that were made on the depth chart this week? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or shoot me a direct message on Twitter at A-Line underscore SC if you listen to today's show on the audio podcast app. 
Once again, thank y'all so much for tuning in. As always, have a great rest of your Tuesday, and I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.